Okay, we are recording. Hey everybody, my name is Joe, and this is episode one of season two of Create Together. It's good to be back. Now, if you were here for season one, you'll know that this show is all about making stuff together. Everything you see in this episode, and every other episode for that matter, is gonna be made by people just like you from all around the world collaborating on creative projects over on Hit Record. People can share ideas and stories and art and build on each other, remix each other, and turn those ingredients into finished short films and music videos and animations and more. Anybody can be a part of it. In fact, we're still making this show right now, and we need you to help us make the next episode. And when we launched the first season of this show, lockdowns were just starting, and we were all using creativity to help us process this new reality of the pandemic. But for season two, we didn't want to focus on being stuck indoors again. We wanted to turn our attention to the outside world. So our theme for this season will be nature. Nature! Look at all those honeybees. Over the next six episodes, we'll be creating art inspired by nature in all its forms. We'll be celebrating some weird and wonderful aspects of nature that you might not know about. We'll also be exploring our relationship with nature, the effect it has on our lives, and the effect that we might be having on our environment. So, all that and more coming up this season. Now, let's get started. Watch this. Now, sometimes nature can be powerful and destructive, but it can also be fragile. And by celebrating this incredible planet that we have, we remind ourselves of what we have to lose. We wanted to hear stories of people who were fighting to protect our planet. So we put out a prompt and asked people to nominate someone who was doing something inspirational on behalf of the environment. One contribution in particular stood out is from Therese in the Philippines, who told us about her friend, Mitzi. Hello. My name is Therese Francis Clergy Castro from the Philippines, and I'd like to nominate Mitzi Janelle Tan. There is no climate justice without social justice. Who is a Filipino youth climate justice activist, what do we want? Climate justice. What do we want? an international spokesperson of Youth Advocates for Climate Action Philippines, or YACA. Mitzi was my former high school classmate, and she has been raising awareness and continued protests in protecting small farmers, ancestral lands, and more. So after hearing about Mitzi, we of course wanted to hear more of her story. It turned out that Mitzi's drive for change stemmed from her personal experience of just how destructive nature can be. Hey everyone, I'm Mitzi Jo Tan, a climate activist based in Manila, Philippines. This is Phoebe. So typhoons are a regular thing here in the Philippines. I remember growing up, I would always have to do my homework by candlelight because there was no electricity because of the typhoons outside. And sometimes I would wake up and there would be floods inside my room. I remember asking my parents why this was happening and they, they, they didn't know the answer. Growing up, you can really see how the typhoons have been getting worse and more frequent and more intense. It didn't used to flood all the way up to the second floor or the third floor of houses. That used to be a once in a lifetime thing. In 2009 or 2010, that was when Typhoon Ondoy hit Manila and the floods reached second or third floors. And you were like, okay, that's never gonna happen again. It happened last year. It was worse last year because it was four in the span of three weeks. Typhoon Goni was the strongest storm in recorded history. And then barely a week after that, Typhoon Banco came in, which poured over a month's worth of rain in under 24 hours. I was on my way home when it came. 
and the road to my house were already flooded, 12 meters or 40 feet high. So I couldn't go home. People were stranded on their rooftops. I had to go to a friend's place and there was no electricity there and we had no signal. I had no idea if my mom was okay. I had no idea if she was stranded on a rooftop, if, if there was a place to come home to after. And that's just the reality of the climate crisis here in the Philippines. It, it's this constant fear of drowning in your own bedroom. This isn't just my story and this isn't just happening in the Philippines. This is a global story. There's people drowning on one side of the world and people dying of thirst on the other side of the world. And we're seeing wildfires and ice storms and tornadoes and hurricanes. I try so hard for it to not overwhelm me, but it is something that's just always there. We were struck by Mitzi's experience, but as she herself said, she's not alone. Extreme weather events in various forms happen all around the world. So Mitzi started a project inviting people to share their own stories of surviving natural disasters. I want to hear your story of how a natural disaster changed your life forever. I was part of like two natural disasters. One was the floods in 2015. Back in 2017, Portugal was quite literally devastated by wildfires. In South Africa, Johannesburg is 2004, which had like an extreme drought. Um, hi, my name is Stephanie. And in the summer of 2019, Nova Scotia got hit by Hurricane Dorian. It's Canada. We don't get hurricanes. And Hurricane Dorian, when it got to us, had Category 2 hurricane force winds. There was this, this roar. Like, when it really started ramping up, it was, it had that sound of like being in a plane that's taking off. Until it gets to this, like, what it sounds like to be in a freight train. This like scream, this like howl. And that's sustained, it doesn't stop. It's constant. And then you get these, these bursts, these gusts of wind, like machine gun fire. It would be like pa 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 It was so incredibly loud. And like the power's out, there's no cell service. You have no contact with anybody. And I had no idea how much worse it was gonna get. The thing that scares me now, we're not set up for that. Canada doesn't have the infrastructure. We're not built for category three. We're not, we're not built for a medium category two. If anything comes at us, that's even just a little bit stronger. Nova Scotia will be gone. So in February of this year, Texas experienced a record-breaking winter storm. No one was expecting this. The state simply is not prepared. It doesn't have any snow plows. It doesn't have any salt to put on the roads. All they had was sand, which did very little. Many roads were impassable for days on end. The ice itself knocked down many power lines, and most houses in Texas require electricity for heat. Once you don't have power and it's below freezing in your home and you don't have water, you're in a life or death situation very quickly. Everything that we rely on falls apart. 1 a.m. Monday morning, all hell broke loose. <clears throat> That's when the blackout started. I had to get up in the middle of the night to get my mom onto the oxygen tank because the power went out. Unfortunately, she had to have electricity 24-7. The power was out for about half an hour and it came back on. This kept happening throughout the night. When morning came, I contacted the power company to ensure that they knew that we absolutely had to have electricity and we shouldn't be included in the brownouts. Monday evening at 7 p.m., the power went out again and they told us that there was a, a power line down and they didn't know when it would come back on. I called 911 and they advised me to get my mom to somewhere that had electricity. The power was out, so I had to dismantle our garage door in the dark with a flashlight so that we could even get our car out. 
So we loaded everything up and we got my mom to a nursing care facility, driving through ice and snow all of the way as carefully as we could while my mom was running out of oxygen. She was struggling the whole way there. The next day, my mom's condition had deteriorated. She managed to call me and my dad on my mom's cell phone one last time. And through very struggled breathing, my mom told us how much she loved us. And she told us that we had to take care of each other. Um, unfortunately, that was the last day that I would have with my mother due to the winter storm. The whole situation was extremely stressful and I felt very powerless to do much of anything. My father and I have PTSD over this whole experience and we're working through it day by day as best we can. And now I don't know whether to stay in Texas, but unfortunately, everywhere I look, there's some kind of a very dangerous weather event that could happen pretty much anywhere in this country. For those of us who haven't lived through one of these weather events, it can be difficult to truly understand. So it's important that we listen to the people who have and amplify their voices. But it was clear that Mitzi was right. This is a shared global story. We're all a part of it. And only by working together do we stand a chance of changing the ending. So we spoke to Mitzi about starting a new project that could both shine a light on these individual experiences, but also capture this message of a global community coming together to speak with one voice. And we landed on the idea of making a collaborative song that the whole world could be a part of. Music is such a powerful tool to move people. And so I want to make a song and a music video based off of our collective experience of surviving natural disasters. So everyone, come tell us your stories for writers to use as inspiration for lyrics. Singers, come and sing these lyrics, and musicians, come play your instruments. Rappers and audio producers, come join us. Grieve habitats burn and they will be returning. I'm gonna sing on this song. I want you to come along sing with me. There's a climate chant which goes, we are unstoppable, a better world is possible. A better world is possible. I want to use this chant in our song. This is a chant we say during marches and rallies, but it's more than a chant. It's a rallying cry. It's one voice joining the many voices. It's fighting for something better because we believe in our collective power. This is our story. This is our music video. I love this idea of people rallying around Mitzi's message and creating a collaborative song. So we're gonna pick up this thread in a future episode and check in with how the project's going. Which means there's now time for you to get involved. Maybe you have experienced a natural disaster yourself and you have a story to share. Or maybe you were inspired by the stories that you've heard and you wanna be a part of making the music video. All you need to do is come to hit record, find Mitzi's project, jump in. Thanks to YouTube Originals for supporting our community. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next episode. Thanks again. Again, my heart.